This is supposed to be a very short intro to Linux for people that want to start programming in Linux um, but haven't ever used it before and aren't really sure what it can do or where to start. Um, so I'm going to cover a bunch of topics here. These are some of my favorite applications. I'm not going to open these or anything, but I suggest that you, you check in to these. You know, if you're programming, the editors are maybe the most important thing. So you might want to try all these. These last two are, are command line editors. Um, this very editor is, is Genie. And one of the nice things about uh, Genie is that you can open a terminal window in the bottom, um, which is one reason I like it. It's also the case for Kate and Gedit if you work at it a little bit. But right now, Genie is my favorite um, text editor for writing code in. And these are just some nice things, you know, uh, so IDE means Integrated Development Environment, Eclipse is huge, QD is huge, Mono is huge, Spider is a very nice uh, environment for writing standalone Python programs. This is a very nice environment for doing Python scripting. Um, so those are things that I use a lot. You know, there are just tons and tons of these programs. I could never co cover them all. I'm just pointing out my favorites. Uh, frequently you need to do a uh, quick calculation, especially with hexadecimal. I really recommend speed crunch for that. BC is a command line um, a command line calculator that that's useful because you can access it so quickly, especially if you're already using the terminal. You know, you can just say BC and then you can say what is 2 to the 60th power and it, it tells you and you can do some other mathematical things. Um, but it, it takes a little bit more effort to figure out how BC works. Um, these are just two programs that I use frequently for compiling and manipulating PDF files. Um, uh, this is a sort of a hack of Microsoft Journal. So if you have a tablet um, with a stylus, you can use it to write on PDFs. And um, I use it a lot for that. I really like that program. It's nice. Um, it's just some more math stuff. So presumably, you know, I'm going to be sharing this with my students and we're going to be doing a lot of mathematical things. And these are some great uh, math packages that you can download. Octave is sort of a GNU version of MATLAB. R is uh, a statistical programming language. Sage uh, is for, it does so many things. It incorporates a lot of these other packages and has, uh, makes some, some, of, some of the graphing um, stuff that you do with, say, uh, Python, Mat, Matplotlib, or other libraries like that makes it a little bit easier. And you can do a lot of abstract mathematics in Sage too, like number theory. And um, so it's sort of like a open source version of something like Maple or Mathematica. If you're a mathematician, you already know what LaTeX is. LaTeX is a is a markup language for writing math. So if you if you've ever seen math with you know nice integral signs and nice summation symbols and nice Greek letters and stuff, the person probably wrote it using LaTeX. Everybody learns to do that in math graduate school. So um, if you want to do any kind of if you want to write programs that do graphic manipulation, then you definitely want to install ImageMagick. It's such a cool program, and it comes with a lot of command line tools for manipulating images, and so many of them. You know, this is uh, this this would be a thick book unto itself. This too, this is sort of the GNU um, open source version of Adobe Photoshop. And so if you need to manipulate images or anything like that, it's pretty good for that. This is a little bit obscure. You know, if you have a data set and you want to make a nice picture of it, uh, GNU plot is good for that. This is a, a language for graphs, like mathematical graphs, you know, nodes connected by edges. And so if you have a data set and you want to make a, a nice network picture or something like that, GraphViz is really good for that. This is another kind of big topic. There would be like a medium-sized book about that. And these, now I told myself that everything from here down I would actually illustrate. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start, I'll do it all in, in one go, but I'm going to start with the, the basic commands instead of these utilities. Um, so what do you need to know to get around? So you, you probably know that, you know, if you want to, you can use graphical stuff in, in Linux. It's a lot like Windows. Um, so there are reasons, though, that you want to use the command line besides just being an iconoclast. The reason is that anything you can do on the command line, you can do from inside a program. And 
you want to be able to do everything from the command line because you want to be able to write a program that does anything and so it can be kind of useful to know how the command line works and uh, so here are the basic instructions for getting around in the command line um, so CD stands for change directory and uh, here I am in, I'm in my home directory PWD tells me where I am um, and inside my home directory there are lots of other directories uh, there maybe I should put this up here so what are they they're in uh, blue right they're colored blue here and the files are black so one thing I might want to do is go to my desktop and then there are lots of files on my desktop too and um, so this ls tells you the contents of the directory and let me go back to where I was this undoes what you just did. If I do cd dot dash, it's kind of like the back button on a browser. Another thing you might do is let's go to just to the root directory. This is where this is like the fundamental directory. Everything derives from here. And um, so if, if you use Linux a lot, then you you sort of figure out what these directories are for. But what I wanted to point out is that if you do tilde, tilde is shorthand for your home directory. So if I want to go back to the desktop, I can do that. By the way, what made that command complete like that was me pressing the tab button. So you probably have tab completion in your terminal and you should you should practice using that. Also the up and down keys go back to your previous commands, so that can be that can be convenient if you've entered some long complicated command that you you want to execute over and over again like maybe a compilation command. All right, so what have we got left here? So we did CD, LS, PWD. Um, oh, another command I should put here is copy and move. Okay, so let's let's do some things like that. It's not what I wanted. Um, so here I am in my desktop, and I'm going to make a new directory, and I'm just going to call it new dir. And sorry, I spelled make directory wrong. And there it is, and I can look at it. By the way, um, so that's that's telling me the contents of, of new dir. If you do ls-l, it gives you a little bit more information. So this is the, every every command has lots of options. So this command, if you if you do ls-l, it shows you all of the permissions, which I'll talk about in a second when I get to chmod, and it also shows like the time of last modification, who the owner of the file is, the group owner of the file, how many bytes it is and um, other useful things like that. Another really useful command or option for ls is ls-ltrc and um, so what that does is it, it lists the files in reverse order of creation. So the most recently created file is this which shows up on the bottom and this is the second most recently created file which I think is actually the video that I'm shooting right now and then some other things like that. Um, so let's say that I want to move uh, something from here into my new directory. I'll just I'll just make a copy of my uh, X-ray of my wrist. So I'll copy that. Now I'm going to hit Tab and it completes. And I'm going to type uh, New and then hit Tab and it completes. And it's going to copy that file into the new directory. And I can go in there and I can look at the contents and you can see that the wrist image is there. I don't want two of those maybe, so I'll. RM is removed, so that deletes a file, and uh, now it's gone. So I'll go back. Up. The directory is empty. That's why I didn't show anything. So maybe instead of making a copy, I want to just move the file, and that's what MV is for. And there's some other subtle differences relating to uh, the changes and the and the permissions between move and copy. But um, you know, if you want to become like a sysadmin or something, you can learn about that in your certification class. So now the wrist images file is there and if you check it's it's gone now from the desktop so that's just where it lives now it lives in the new directory but I'm gonna move it back out because I don't really want it to, to be there. So how do I say here where I am right I want to say like my current directory so the way you do that is with a dot and a forward slash and that will move the wrist image back to the current directory so something I've probably already been doing a little bit unconsciously is using dot dot so dot dot is just up in the directory tree you know um, so what do I mean by directory tree maybe I should make 
some more directories in here. Um, uh, D2, D3. Uh, maybe I can only make one directory at a time. Oh, I misspelled the stupid command again. Uh, dirt D3. Uh, stupid. All right. So I have a bunch of directories in here, and so those directories might have subdirectories and stuff like that. Um, it's nice this tree command kind of displays like a tree-like picture of the contents of all your directories. So if I go into uh, D1 and I, I create a new file, so touch just creates a new file. Um, and uh, so there it is. And I go back up and I hit tree again. You can see that now D1 contains four and those directories might contain other directories and so forth. Uh, I think most people that are quote-unquote digital natives kind of understand this directory tree structure kind of innately. That's what differentiates people who can learn how the rock queue works and people who are 60 who never seem to be able to figure out how they, what their cell phones do and stuff like that. And most young people have internalized this already. All right, so what else have we got? Um, so we've gotten to make dir remove. Oh yeah, what if you want to delete a directory? That can be a little bit of a pain. Sorry, I hit the wrong button again. And um, so let me go back up. So if you just try the naive thing, which is to remove the new dir, you see that it doesn't work. But if you do rm dir new dir, uh, it says that it's not empty. And um, so. You can do rm-r. This is recursive delete. It's a very dangerous command. You know, you might have noticed that there's no like uh, mother mother-like presence here asking me if I'm really sure that I want to do everything that I'm doing. Unix assumes that you mean what you say, so you should be careful what you say because you could delete, say, every single file on your entire computer by executing this command in the wrong situation. Um, so. Now what's left? I think that got rid of the directory too, didn't it? It direct it deleted the directory and everything inside the directory. It's gone. Um, okay, and uh, sudo. So one of the things that makes Linux secure is that from... Uh, so I am a certain user on this computer right now, and my username is Hunter. Um, there are some other users on this computer. One user that you definitely have on your computer is root. And um, if you want to become root, you, you can type su, which means super user, and you'll get prompted for the, uh, the root password. And now if I ask who, who am I, it says that I'm root. And now root can do anything. Um, so when I said that I could have deleted the entire computer earlier, that was a little bit of, of an exaggeration because there are certain directories that I didn't have the permissions to modify as a regular user, but you, root can do whatever he wants, and so this is kind of dangerous. But you need uh, you need to use this this user when you do things like remove and install files and other important things like that, modify the, the contents of sensitive directories and so forth. Uh, so now I'm just myself again. So because you need to do that so often, um, Debian derived Linux distributions have, maybe it started with Ubuntu, probably so, because Debian sometimes doesn't come installed with sudo. In fact, if you, if you, um, if you ha are using Debian and sudo doesn't work, you might want to Google how to install sudo in, uh, in Debian. But there are some important commands that you sometimes want to do, like um, maybe I want to edit some kind of sensitive configuration file. Um, there's one, colord.conf. Uh, so I don't know what this configuration file does exactly, but um, I'm 99% sure that just a regular user does not have the permissions to make changes here. So let me just uh, try. Um, so here's a warning already. It says changing a read-only file. So if I did do something, it wouldn't let me save those changes. So now let me uh, quit here. Now if I do that as sudo, I can do whatever the hell I want to. And I have to type in the system password before I can do sudo. But once I do, now I'm free to make changes like, oh, how do you undo that? That's how. OK. So I'm going to quit without saving any of those, because they would save now because I sudo did that. Um, one thing that sudo is good for is installing packages 
which you can do like this. So this is maybe the best thing about Linux as opposed to Windows, is if you want a program, you don't have to go to some website and download a bunch of garbage and viruses. You just say what you want and it installs on your machine. One thing you probably want if you're just starting uh, to write programs on Linux is build uh, the build essential package. That installs all the compilers, all the things that you're supposed to need to compile your own uh, software. So I already have it installed, and so it's not going to install it twice. Uh, but this is this is uh, useful. This is basically where new software comes from, and you can research this. And there's you know a book could be written on this program. You can also install, update, uh, update, delete, modify, and other things like that using uh, apt-get, which you have to be sudo to use. Alright, uh, so what else? Uh, we've covered all those. So the basic commands are dead. Uh, maybe I should stop and um, break this apart and make it two videos. I think I'm going to do that.